and welcome to our top 10 tips for choosing the right cruise line. There are lots of things to consider when choosing a cruise holiday, from the ship you sail on to the destinations that you visit, but something that can often get overlooked is choosing the right cruise line. If you are new to cruising, that can often be down to the fact that people tend to think that all cruise lines are alike, but aside from operating cruise ships, the differences can actually be quite vast and can really make or break your experience whilst away on holiday. If you prefer peace and quiet on holiday, you don't want to be on a party boat. And if you want lots to do whilst at sea, you don't want to choose a more traditional cruise line with smaller and older ships. If you are travelling as a family who all have different things that they enjoy doing, you will likely want a resort style holiday, whilst if you are looking for an adventure to remember forever, you will maybe want to choose an expedition cruise line. Despite all offering the same base product, a cruise holiday. Every line adds their own twist on things to create a unique experience that some love, some hate, and some, well, they're just glad to be on a cruise ship, whatever. With so many different lines, offering so many different styles of cruising, just how do you decide on which to cruise with? That is what we tried to answer in this list. As ever, don't forget to like and subscribe, and why not leave a comment below? We would love to hear your views on this list. My name is Darren. And this is our look at the top 10 tips for choosing the right cruise line. I'm sure that this is something that doesn't really need to be said to most people, but it can be easy to get swept up in the marketing that you see for any product you buy. But that can be absolutely the case when it comes to picking a cruise line, as they use specific language and imagery to sell us their vision of the line, and that is not often what can be actually experienced. This is something that is a huge deal breaker for some cruisers, it simply just doesn't matter for others, but for most, like us, it's somewhere in the middle. We do prefer a more relaxed approach to dress codes, as we do like to do what we want on holiday. And sometimes we simply want to get back on board, head to the buffet, stay out on deck all night, and take in the views whilst looking for wildlife, and on those days, we just don't want to get dressed up. We also really don't want to be taking a suit and tie and getting dressed up like it's a funeral, when we are on holiday, but we certainly don't mind putting some effort, especially on a sea day. Of course, some cruisers prefer to just stay in their favourite jeans and t-shirt for the whole time on board, whilst others look forward to getting dressed up to the nines. Each cruise line has their own expectations for guests, and you need to understand them if that could be an issue that affects your holiday. In the main, the onboard currency of a cruise ship will be in US dollars, especially if you are cruising on the mainstream line. That isn't an issue for most cruisers, even for those living outside the US, but for some, it can be an issue. Maybe you're on a tight budget and not knowing the exact price of your onboard spend is a big issue. Or maybe you're just not that confident in being able to make the conversion in your head before making a purchase. Whatever the reasons, some prefer to use their own currency on board if possible, and that will restrict the line you can sail with. Lines such as Pinot Cruises and the Ambassador Cruise Line have sterling as their onboard currency, and some lines will offer flexibility based on the region the ship is in, with the likes of MSC offering Euro, Sterling or Dollars as the onboard currency depending on where the ship is based. If you are sailing with children, there will be times when you want to be all together, and there will be times when the adults and the kids want to do their own things, and the great news is that most cruise lines understand that. Some lines offer very basic facilities such as babysitting, while some will have full programs of activities split across different age ranges that will entertain all kids throughout a sea day. Knowing what level of service you will need and finding the line that offers it before booking could really make the difference to your getaway. Just as the onboard experience varies from one line to the next, the way you put together your holiday can vary between the different lines as well. Some cruisers like to plan their holidays and take the time needed to find flights, book transfers to the cruise port, choose pre or post cruise hotels, choose drink packages and decide on Wi-Fi options and then of course you got to choose any excursions you want to take, alongside anything else that goes into a cruise trip. Some people just want to book a cruise and have everything sorted for them and there are several lines that will allow you to do just that by offering an all-inclusive style of cruising with some lines offering some sort of hybrid option. Knowing how much you want to do yourself and how much you expect the line to do will help you find the right cruise line to sail with. Most cruise lines will operate with English as the only onboard language, although things such as your dailies and safety information 
will often be made available in several different languages. Depending on where you sail, such as the Med for example, some lines will also make key announcements in local languages such as Spanish and Italian, or if there are many passengers who speak a certain language, they will make announcements in that one. Some lines, such as AIDA and Mannschiff, have German as their main or only language on board, so if the language barriers are concerned to you, make sure your chosen cruise line has a language you understand as the main on board language. Most cruise lines have a loyalty program, and whilst the rewards offered have gotten less and less over time, if you have built up a high level on these programs for one line, it may make you want to stick with them. If you find yourself having sailed on every ship you want to with that line, and visited everywhere of interest that they offer, you can often match your loyalty level on another line. That is because most cruise lines are part of the same family as other lines, and they are owned by the same parent company. With companies such as Carnival Corporation operated over 90 ships across 9 lines, and therefore dominating the market. If your loyalty rewards are an important part of choosing a cruise line for you, check others to see if that line will match your reward status, and you may find there are other lines made available to you. Some people love to escape from the trappings of being stuck to technology, such as mobile phones and laptops, whilst on holiday, but it is something that so many of us are guilty of doing. If staying connected is a big plus for you, make sure you sail with a line that offers fast connections and an always on option, as a lot of lines limit what you can do and even how long you will be connected for. It isn't just about being able to access the internet however, as a number of lines offers technology that can really advance your holiday, including being able to order drinks from your phone, to be delivered to you no matter where you are on the ship, which is great for those with mobility issues, or the chance to be able to track where other passengers are on the ship, which is ideal for those travelling with kids or elderly relatives. If you are travelling by yourself, you will often find it quite shocking as to how much extra cruise lines will charge you. It is often the case that your per person fee will simply be double the cost of what it would be for two people sharing a room, but thankfully there are now several lines that will offer even no extra cost for those sitting alone, or only a small solo cruiser supplement. Some lines offer special rooms designed for solo travellers, and some go even further and offer areas of the ship, including lounges and restaurants, that are for the sole use of those travelling alone. It really does pay to see what a line can offer those sitting alone, as not only could you get a much better experience, but you could also save a vast sum of money. This is arguably the most important thing, as the reputation of a line really does matter, as past performance is a key indicator of future performance. If a line has a reputation for missing ports, for polluting where they sail, or for a poor onboard experience, the chances are that will be your experience as well. There are plenty of places online, including ourselves, where you can read honest reviews from actual cruisers. Whilst every line will have their issues from time to time, you will easily see a pattern of behaviour emerging from looking over other reviews. So all that remains to be said is thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed our look at our top 10 tips for choosing the right cruise line, and see you next time.